Hey peeps, we are back. We are talking The Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 7, Episode 5. Hey, before we get into the video, please do me the honors of subscribing to my channel, hitting the notification bell so you can always be notified when I post new content, hitting the thumbs up because that does wonders for my channel, and share. Thanks. Before we get into the show, I wanted to apologize. During the editing, I realized that something's going on with my microphone and there was a lot of sounds like static but it's clearly my microphone rubbing up against my shirt so I'm gonna place my microphone somewhere else in the future I do apologize now on to the show so the episode starts out with Ashley visiting Candace you know she comes over to Candace's house this is her first time seeing um, Candace and Chris's new home that her house is beautiful. I think last season we saw it, but she hadn't quite gotten all of her furniture yet. I think due to COVID and shipping issues and things like that. But now she has everything and it looks beautiful. I also really like how she's wearing her natural hair. And you know, it was one scene and we've seen about seven different hairstyles. I mean, she played in it so much. I don't know if it was because she was not used to wearing her natural hair on camera or what. Maybe she felt a little nervous, but one minute it would be flipped to the left, flipped to the back, flipped to the side. I said, well, that is a very versatile hairstyle. Anyway, I thought it was beautiful, but it was a hilarious scene to watch just to see what style it was going to be in the next time the camera panned to Candace. Ashley did clear something up for Candace. She let her know that her and Michael are truly legally separated. They can still be separated legally and live in the same house. They just can't have the sex and they can't sleep in the same bed together. At one point in their conversation, we find out that Ashley was seen out in public somewhere with a hockey player. And you know what? If they are legally separated, Ashley should be able to date. You know, normally I would say, Oh, you're legally separated, but you're still married. So maybe you shouldn't. But Michael was out doing whatever the hell it is he wanted to do whenever he wanted to do it, how he wanted to do it. You know, he was spreading it low and wide all over the place. You know what I mean? So now that they are legally separated, if she wants to have a little dinner with somebody, I say go for it uh, to hell with him. Anyway, I didn't really like that Ashley and Candace talked about Ray and Karen's marriage and talked about possibly Karen going out and you know seeing somebody else at this point Ashley's marriage has been the target for several seasons because her husband was low down spreading it low and wide you know and now Candace is getting all this flack from the girls claiming that her husband is out doing something and it hurt both Ashley and Candace. So why would you throw Karen under the bus? You know, leave her alone. You know, Karen is not out here spreading any rumors about Chris. Get off Karen's back. That's all I'm saying. I really, really, really enjoyed seeing Ashley and Candace together. Later on in the episode, we find out that Candace is releasing her album again, which we did hear about that earlier in the season but she let us know that she's releasing a new single called Insecure and Trina, the baddest bitch, you know, from Florida. Remember Trina and Trick? Anyway, Trina is gonna be featured on the Insecure song and her sister had no idea who the hell Trina was. I said, oh gosh. But then I thought her sister could be, you know, 30 or under. So it's possible her sister has no idea who Trina is and she damn sure don't have a clue who Trick Daddy is. Anyway, I think that's a great feature and I can't wait to hear Candace's song. But after they talked about the song, Candace did make a comment where she said that she didn't want to have beef with any of the ladies, especially not Ashley. I think that Candace really was trying to make a go at her relationship with Ashley. I think that she realized that her and Ashley have more in common than not. And things are really fun between the two of them. I'm really disappointed at how the episode ended when it comes to Candace and Ashley. Now, honey, listen, we get over there to Mia's house with Gordon. You know, her and Gordon having a little dinner with the kids. And she's talking about where's the 
centerpiece. We don't have meals without a centerpiece, girl. Sit the hell down, okay? Really? We know where you come from, and we know you worked at the strip club. You was having meals without a damn centerpiece, okay? Listen, all I need at a meal is the damn meal, okay? I'm just saying. Girl, shut the hell up. One thing that cracked me up was Gordon reminding her of her storyline this season. He brings up her being ill and she's sitting there looking at him like, what? I said, damn it, Mia. Did he really just catch you by surprise? That's your whole storyline this season. You got the lumps that have to be removed. Just possible that you had the cancer. But now you don't have the cancer. And Gordon has to bring this up, including telling you, well, you've been sick for all this time. Girl, all you do is lie. Lie, 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 lie. I'm telling you, Mia girl, gone some damn where. So Mia brings up to Gordon that she's thinking about asking all the ladies to go on a trip to Miami because she could really use a nice girl's trip after all of this suffering, you know, with this illness she's been going through. And then she asked him what is off limits when she goes to Miami. I said, what exactly is she asking him? Can she spread it low and wide while she's down in Miami? Like what is, what is going on? But then she starts bragging about her sexual tryst on the beach with a married Gordon. How she was on the beach with Gordon, busting it open in front of everybody on the beach while this man is married. And I said, first of all, that's gross and disgusting. Then second of all, please do remember how you get them is how you lose them. That is real tacky and nasty. And that is the last thing that I would be talking about on national television. And she was speaking about it with zero, zero remorse. I just thought that was disgusting. And why would you even want to say something like that, knowing that at one day your children is going to be able to see that? Anyway, moving on. Now, honey, Giselle goes out with her daughters and her kids are so beautiful. I mean, I feel the same way about Dorit that I feel about Giselle. I really don't like Dorit or Giselle, but when you see them with their children, you just melt. You know what I mean? Her girls have grown up so much. We have watched those girls grow up on this show and they are just adorable. And they are the only ones that can get Giselle all the way together. When she picked up that towel that was supposed to be for the pedicure to wipe her face, I said, well, what, the, what damn it, you've got that big purse with you. You don't have anything, a Kleenex, nothing in your purse. That little sponge that we use to, you know, pat our faces down. You can't pull one of those out. What are you doing, nasty woman? And that's her daughter said. She said, that's nasty. You nasty. We also see Robin go to see a lawyer regarding this prenup for this marriage that we don't know when is ever going to happen. And we find out, of course, Robin says again that she makes more money than Ron. She's got her hat business and she also has her podcast and she doesn't want Juan to be able to take any of her money in case they get divorced. And she also mentioned that their last marriage ended because of infidelity. I thought their last marriage ended because allegedly Robin and one of her best friends or Juan's best friends, um, stole all their money thanks to Robin giving it to the person. That's what I heard. That's all alleged because I don't know these people and that could not be true. But that's why I thought their marriage ended. You know, to me, Robin and Juan have zero chemistry. I don't think that there is a love connection there as far as a romantic connection. They don't look like they have any romance. I think that they are just best friends and I wouldn't be marrying Juan, but I do appreciate that she is thinking ahead and I think that she should get a prenuptial agreement. So when Ashley and Wendy are riding together down to the um, burn session that she has set up, she set up something called a burn session so all the girls can get together and try to mend some of these broken fences. We find out that Wendy has kidney stones and she gets them quite often. Um, you know, she says it's because they are telling her that she hasn't drank enough water and she's giving Ashley all these things that she does and she doesn't have enough time to drink water. Wendy, come on, honey, listen, you are losing your hair. You are trying to do your teaching. You're also doing your commentating. You are raising kids. You're doing the housewife show. You was somebody's wife. 
you're trying to open up a restaurant, what you really need to do is set the hell down and get a gallon of water. Get you some damn water and have several damn seats. You need to take care of yourself so you can be around to raise your kids, see them go off to college, get married, have children, things like that. You know, we find out that her mom was rushed to the hospital. I'm hoping the very best for her mother. Wendy, it's time for you to sit down and stop this. Come up with three things you truly are passionate about. Stick to that and spend the rest of your time resting, drinking your water and taking your medication for your hair. You're doing too much. So listen, as soon as we get to this winery, the first thing that pops into my head is dear Lord, that Monique Candace situation happened at a winery. Why would they be back at another winery? And then I said, well, of course, the producers probably would love them to be back at a winery. The next thing you know, you see Candace saying the same thing. Why the hell is Wendy set this up at a winery? The mystery around around your health. What about it? Daddy G was very happily married to his ex-wife. Yeah, we had sex on the beach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we put on a show. We knew people were watching. I did everything but pussy pop on a handstand. It's called Insecure. And Trina agreed to do the feature. Who? You don't know who the baddest bitch is? If I do not want to have beef with anyone. Right. Especially not Ashley. <laughs> Please don't tell anyone I tried to fight you anymore. Sharice. Yes, love. At the dance studio, did yeah. you put one finger on me? No. Thank you. So why the lies? My truth, the lies. your truth. She just Yo, said you are she didn't horrible. touch Robin. You are horrible. You why are you yelling? Because you are horrible. You, maybe you should because control you, your emotions. I don't, I don't give a I don't give a, f I, don't give a f I don't give a f Honestly, all the screaming came from your side of the table. I'm trying to figure out why. I like to talk loud, damn it. I, it doesn't help the group to move forward, it Giselle. Doesn't. We went straight to hell in a basket from jump. People you know, Chris was being a little bit flirty with her. <laughs> Being what, a little bit flirtatious with what her. What is so. what is the purpose of this? What because is, we were together in my home. This this came to me. This came recently. to you after, and you couldn't have called me. Mm. As you want to call Michael a predator every which way, okay? Well, if your it's husband documented, is it not true? It is not true. But why are you getting defensive if it just because happens? I see the pattern and I'm not going to ignore could, the pattern? Has anyone Chris was looking at her at the or, spring party? What? He was. But I didn't say that it was sexual, but I, he Ooh. definitely was staring. Okay. It don't feel good, huh? Uh-huh. It there doesn't it feel good. There it is. Like, what did she say? Here. I should have kept my good eye on that bulbous ass forehead, bitch. I knew she wasn't no good, and I went against my better judgment, and look at us now. Wait, You're saying, a liar. And I it to this, this, this bitch. Do you just want to turn a blind eye? Because that's the case, and just say so. Well, I mean, you would Just know. say. Just say. Ooh. Ooh. I've also heard that Chris has been in some other DMs that are not quite as innocuous and innocent as mine. First, I just want to say I do appreciate the editors. There was a lot of good editing during this episode, but I do think that they dropped the ball and missed an opportunity to put in other aggressive moments of Robins throughout the seasons. I also would like to say that I hate to say this, but colorism is real. I feel that Robin and Giselle throughout the seven seasons have exhibited some form of colorism. You know, I hate to say that about the two of them because at one point Robin was my all time favorite girl, but this is looking bad, you know, and I think that Bravo will need to talk about this. They definitely need to have a full segment about this during the reunion because I think that they are definitely ganging up on Wendy and I think they did the same thing to Monique and sometimes they do it to Candace as well so I don't know you guys you may agree you may not get down in the comments and share your thoughts with me when Giselle got out of that sprinter van and almost twisted them ankles the first thing I thought was not today neck not today ankles that cracked me up I I'm rude I'm sorry moving on so okay we already know Giselle and Robin is always loud and they are always wrong. Just wrong all the damn time. We knew that. Giselle brings up the whole 
Wendy saying hi to her and trying to go in for a hug. I'm okay with Giselle not wanting to hug Wendy. So what? Don't hug her. We don't give a damn. But what I am not okay with is that Giselle and Robin both are trying to act as if they did not do anything to warrant Wendy to be pissed with them. Giselle is the one, and thanks for the editors, who brought that whole rumor to the show that Eddie had an affair and a side baby. Remember, last season it was Eddie's turn to be thrown under the bus. And they also spent the entire season not only talking about her husband, but talking about her plastic surgery. You can't piss somebody off or F somebody over and then tell them how they're supposed to handle it, how they are supposed to deal with it. They continue to poke Wendy throughout the entire season. And when she had had enough and decided to drag both of them for filth, all of a sudden, oh no, oh no, she's too aggressive. Now here's the thing though. They can say that Wendy is condescending, which of course they tried to say that throughout the entire episode, even with the flashbacks. But to me, that's just a microaggression. Um, I think that these women are pissed off because Wendy is smart as hell and she's very quick witted. And Giselle, Robin and Mia, they're not quick. They really aren't. It takes them a minute to pull it together. The three women at that table who can really read you quickly and pick up on your BS is Wendy, Candace, and Karen. Those three women do not play. You can say what you want to say about those three, but those three are lethal when it comes to their words. Robin on that phone calling Sharice. Sharice, did you put one finger on me to prevent me from touching Wendy? And honey, listen, I said, thank you, editors. See, you know, Giselle and Robin are working hard, but the editors are working much harder. The editor said, no, hell no. She didn't put one finger on you. She put all 10 of her fingers on you because you were being aggressive and walking close to Wendy. Giselle screaming, look at the lies, lies. No, ma'am. I don't even know why you were involved in this conversation in the first place because during the time that Wendy and Robin were going at it. You were still sitting off in the room with Mia trying to apologize for your bad behavior with that fake ass apology. I'm just saying. And then Mia in the whole Chris was, you know, looking at me, but I didn't say it was in a sexual way. You certainly implied it. You certainly implied it. Then last week she made a post apologizing to Chris and Candace. And I think I put it in my video, but Candace went out after the show and she said, let the record also reflect that Mia admitted last week that she was a lying. She also texted me and apologized for lying, happy to produce receipts. So even though Mia posted that message last week that he wasn't looking at her in a sexual way, it seems that she also sent a message directly to Candace. Karen was also out on Twitter and Karen said, Clearly, I'm in Real Housewives of Potomac observation mode, watching along with you, the viewers, witnessing all the lies, aggressive behavior, and clowning. Don't let me grab my broom to clean this mess up, shaking my head. That is true. That is true. If you remember in the scene, Karen said it was only Giselle and Robin acting out, being loud. All the screaming and yelling was coming from their side of the table, but they always want to call Wendy aggressive. Wendy sat there in her seat, speaking with her inside voice. Not once did she raise her voice, yell and scream, point, none of that. That was all Giselle and Robin. Then Karen also posted, some folks out here a complete lion ass fools. Okay, I bet she's talking about Sharice mostly and Robin. Karen also said, I guess the plotting some folks did in advance of taping this season needed to be rehearsed. Whoever told them that this storyline approach would be believable lied. You know, so Ashley brings up Chris again, and I just don't understand why. This is nonsense. No one has any real true receipts. If you are going to keep on throwing this man under the bus and lying on this man, this is disgusting. Ashley should absolutely be ashamed of herself. 
She knows good and daggone well that she could have called Candace. She could have sent Candace a text message. She could have pulled Candace to the side the way Candace pulled her to the side when they were at Monique's house on the lake. She did not have to do this in front of the group. Ashley was getting all sorts of excitement out of this. You could see by how she was smiling the whole time. When Candace goes about verbally slaughtering the hell out of uh, Ashley, uh, I'm just here for it. I'm here to watch because she did not have to do that. I don't know if it was the fact that when she went to Candace's home, she saw that Candace and Chris had a beautiful home, that they are happy and Candace is not living off of her husband's money. I don't know what that was. Maybe that pushed Ashley over the edge because she is living off of Michael and trying to get Michael to buy her a house. I have no clue. Why would you wait until you are trying to mend your relationship with this lady to do that when you could have talked to her one-on-one. -on -one. Ashley definitely used this as a way to get back at Candace. And I'm not saying that Candace has never done anything to Ashley because Candace has said and done a lot of stuff to Ashley. My problem with this is don't come over to this woman's house laughing and kikiing with her and acting like you guys are building a bridge only to try to humiliate her in front of the rest of the group. And then that comment talking about it doesn't feel good, does it? Girl, your husband has been doing all kinds of nasty sexual stuff that was caught on camera, not on camera, brought to the news stations. I mean, come on, give me a break. And I think that Wendy and Ashley trying to form a better friendship, Wendy should watch out for Ashley because if she would do this in front of everybody and try to embarrass the hell out of Candace, she would definitely do it to Wendy as well. Sharice did go out online and say that she was not holding Robin back from putting her hands on Wendy. Um, she said she did not think that Robin, of course, would physically attack Wendy. However, she did stand up just to attempt to keep the situation calm. Um, get the hell out of here. You know exactly why you stood up and you know exactly why you had to use both hands. Cherise, stop lying. I think that Wendy sat there and continued to be calm so that none of these girls can continue to call her aggressive. However, Robin, you were extremely aggressive. And then you looked like an idiot sitting out there in the Sprinter van for all that time while they were having dinner and drinks. Candace also said on Twitter, Michael is a predator ho. These are facts. She also said, I would also like the record to reflect that I received a text message about four heads, rapey ass husband on camera. The camera was on me while I was preparing to walk out of the room and my friend sent me the text message that I later showed her. If I had received the text message off camera, I would have approached her off camera. So that was Candace's response to the flashback that they showed on the episode um, of her and Giselle privately telling Ashley about the text message she received about Michael. So Mia decides that she wants to get involved on the action and she says, I'm sorry, but I would have to agree with Sharice on this one. If Robin wanted rat -a tat tat two faced always calling everybody else a liar, but got caught uh, being a liar, Wendy, she would have. Have y'all seen Robin? My girl is strong AF. Char, which is short for Sharice, I think, would not be able to hold her back. But then again, y'all also say Chris wasn't staring because of a two second clip. Hashtag at this point, we all lying. Well, one thing is for sure, you're a liar, Mia. Okay, and an adulteress and just cheap. Anyway, you guys, get down in the comments and let me know what you think. And until next time, bye.